Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be a long range outlook. Uh, I haven't done one in a decent amount of time, so I decided it was time to do so, especially since I have been noticing a few uh, <clears throat> a few things that I would like to point out. Uh, the little disclaimer I want to announce is that this by no means is a forecast or a prediction of mine. Because <clears throat> every time I always put something up on this channel or talk about something that I don't even think will happen, people just say, oh, you predicted it. Well, I'm not predicting this. What is forecasted to happen? <clears throat> the GFS and European model are app that's showing a fairly big troughing pattern that could develop across the later part of August into first half of September. Um, can this change? Oh yes, I mean this will change. It's it will change, and it could go either way. You know, it could be even colder, it could be warmer, or it could stay the same. But I am not saying that this is what's going to be. I just want to share with you what the models are showing. So I just want to get that out of the way, because some people really have a hard time understanding that. Also, consider subscribing to this channel. It really means a lot. It helps this channel grow. It helps us get reach out to more people, and consider doing so. Thank you. So right now we're looking at the uh, G European model actually, and if we were to go back to zero zero, um, we could start from the beginning. So what is this, and what is this showing? <clears throat> so basically, what's this showing is uh, the, the 500 millibar potential height, and this basically what this does is allows us to see the troughs and the ridges at given times of uh, of the of the forecast run and <clears throat> see this right there that 540 that's the freezing line that is 32 degrees or lower and obviously if you get into the 490 the around the 500 millibar that is cold 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 folks that is very cold and if you get up to these oranges and is even this red that is really warm and these purples are rarely seen but that is really hot and <clears throat> so let's uh, let's just see what the European has in store. You can see right now we're in a bit of a cool off, 576 through 570 millibars, and <clears throat> in height. And you can see that it, that would mean a little bit of cooler air allowed by the European model. <clears throat> and you can see that possibly a, a ridge trying to get in here Saturday, August 17th. But it lets up some warmth comes back in, marked by those red and orange warm colors, and that is. <laughs> that is indicating uh, a more of a warm-up. Now uh, you can see even some darker reds that's possibly showing a potential heat wave. And this could, uh, you know, not affect the whole states, but I, I'm pretty sure that these parts of the country could get a couple of heat advisories or excessive heat watches and warnings as we go into the long range or around the, this next Tuesday. <clears throat> and I want to point out something. Look how, however, when we get into the forecast, Long range. Here, uh, this is around next Friday, next Thursday. Look at this little tr uh, feature, this trough that tries making its way into the northeast U.S. This, if it's even placed a little bit more to the west, it could affect a bigger portion of the United States. Right now, it seems to only be affecting the northeast, or you know, forecasting to affect the northeast. But that is um, <clears throat> that is uh, affecting it with very chilly. I mean, you get those green temperatures. That is. That's 50s, 60s, and during the night's 40s, uh, lower 40s possibly, <clears throat> across um, maybe not in the U.S., but definitely southern Maine, but possibly you know a few hundred miles outside of the U.S. U.S. probably 50s and 60s during the day. So, uh, and then after that, you can see more, a uh, little bit of warmth tries coming back in. However, it gets shoved out by more of a troughing pattern, and you could just see this by <clears throat> a ridge being right here, <clears throat> marked by that warm orange or red color. And then more of a troughing, so cooler conditions for these part of the country. And let's see if that's what the GFS resembles. Let's go to just the, yeah, let's just stay at the, the 500 millibar potential height since we want to keep it consistent since that's what we I showed you with the European model. So right now you can see the GFS 500 millibar geo potential height and MSLP, which we, we're, we're not really taking into account here. We're not talking about storm systems. <laughs> we're just talking about general uh, troughing and ridging patterns. You could see that <clears throat> we see a uh, a similar feature of what the European wanted to put in across portions of uh, the northern U.S. across Saturday and Sunday. But the GFS takes it a little bit further south, but still doesn't drive it into the U.S. This ridge is hot, is hotter and stronger than this low up here, and that as you can see drives it up. And again, just like the European was showing, um, a period of of warmth possible. 
<clears throat> across much of the country, uh, you could see, I mean, much of the country, you could see it, it would be in warm temperatures above average <clears throat> around that early to midweek of next week. Even some of those darker colors indicating more heat. Then again, we see that feature though. Uh, the, the GFS does not have this, <clears throat> I think, uh, yeah, the GFS does not have this feature affecting the Northeast uh, as much as the European does, <clears throat> but it does still clip parts of the Northeast, you can see with some chillier temperatures. Um, then again, we try getting back into ridging pattern, it falls apart, I mean, you can see the reds are gone. They try reconstructing themselves, but they get slammed by a trough, and this one brings really chilly conditions, below average by all means. <clears throat> and then we see one <clears throat> trying to actually dig its way uh, way into the US and this would be very interesting you can see that this would actually kind of tear off from the polar jet stream and if you want to call it that this time of the year it, and it kind of just sits into the Great Lakes and kind of I mean look at see you, you can see these colors are basically gone and we just see yellows so possibly uh, the GFS is hinting at some very very chilly temperatures way below average Again, this is uh, what the GFS is saying. I'm not saying this has happened. I, I just want to show you what the models are showing and put my perspective on it. What I think as of right now is that uh, there will be warm conditions. Uh, <clears throat> this weekend shouldn't be uh, record-breaking heat in most locations. It should be rather comfortable or close to normal. Then it should warm up for a little bit <clears throat> around that Tuesday, Wednesday time. However, then we get that little cool off for the Northeast, especially the rest of the country seems in moderate temperatures, maybe slightly above average uh, to uh, just above average. And then again, towards that late around that, um, the European doesn't uh, catch on to it really quite well, but around that uh, next weekend, really next, next week, we could be looking at more of a cooler pattern. Again, this is very long range, but <clears throat> you could see that. Uh, right now we're, we were looking at some cooler temperatures, but generally the heat tries making a comeback, but notice how during the day it's much cooler across these portions of the country. <clears throat> and this allows for uh, a cooling and a little bit of break from this heat. I mean, you can see some of these days are going to be warm, the Monday, Tuesday of next week, especially for the, uh, the northeast before that cool off. And again, I want to say that because this is not... When, that, when they're showing that cool off. But you can see um, warm across much of the country. We see a little bit of cold air locked up to the north. It doesn't really make its way successfully down, <clears throat> but um, you can see that there is a bit of a cool off right there, especially for the northeast, and that's the thing that the European and GFS are in fairly good agreement. <clears throat> it has the core of this, of this below average temperatures, that's blue on blue, whatever, but hopefully you can see that, like, kind of up here. If it was down further here, even here, this would bring chillier temperatures to this part of the country. But at this point, it seems to only affect <clears throat> Ohio, parts of Michigan, <clears throat> Pennsylvania, New York, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, and the coastal uh, co um, coastal states as well. So let's go uh, into 168, and this is where things get interesting. You can still see warmer pattern, warmer pattern, but then we get boom, blasted by a fairly big Arctic blast, <laughs> Arctic fall blast around the 26th. 27th of August and we you know before we think that's over <clears throat> I want to point out the the west seems pretty warm at this time of the uh <clears throat> of the long range but then you know as soon as we think the you know the heat may come back for the midwest we see another arctic or fall blast come through and this one again kind of sits in the middle and doesn't really want to move and affects a good portion of the country i mean like the most of the center part of the country uh, if you are, if i were to show you the 6 to 10 day outlook it's honestly not showing <coughs> this uh not even the 6 i want to show you the 8 to 10 <laughs> 8 to 10 day outlook or 8 to 14 day outlook. This one you can see is showing a little bit of chillier temperatures across the um, central part of the country, which is actually a little bit strange because I would expect this to sh be showing warmer, this one to be showing cooler, but nevertheless, uh, they're adjusting and I think uh, <laughs> if you were to add in Canada to this, you'd see a big blue blob over here because you could see it expands into Alaska and this soon would be able to move down into the US. Uh, I'm not saying they're wrong because I'm not believing the GFS 100% either because it's, it's looking fairly too aggressive. But, you know, if you want to look at the ensembles of the GFS, which is, <laughs> which is all the GFS, I guess, family members, um, they're showing also a little bit of a cool off, but it's obviously less drastic since there's more of these models and some of them, you know, could be showing warmer, some of them could be showing cooler, so it averages out to a little bit less <coughs> aggressive uh, than GS GFS, you know, the one model itself, but you, know, you can see uh, they're showing warm temperatures for a good portion of next week, I mean Wednesday, Tuesday, and then finally around Thursday we could get a cool off, and the GFS ensembles are actually showing, remember how I said that <coughs> the 
the thing that was supposed to only clip the northeast, the GFS ensembles are showing it actually clipping a good portion of the uh, eastern part of the country, so that's a little bit different. And if we move on forward uh, into, say, our 174, you can see it starts, uh, the heat may look like it's starting to come back, and it does very briefly here before we start seeing uh, a more of a cooling pattern occurring, uh, and you can see that allows for more cooler air to come into the country. And the GFS ensembles, GEFS ensembles, aren't showing as drastic of a cooling later on as with this a blast in the northeast. So that's a little bit interesting that I thought I'd point out. Uh, this is just speculation in long range. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And consider subscribing, consider leaving a nice comment, and I'll see you all guys on the next episode. See ya. Bye.